everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and I'm back with another video. This time it's a new release from Power Poppy and it's called um, Graceful Still Life. Now I cropped in on those dogwood branches and twisted the image, but Marcel is so awesome that she made you all another digi that will come with this image. So they come together bundled of just the dogwood branch by itself so you don't have to go through blowing it up and rotating it and all of that. She did all of that work for you. How fantastic is that? The sentiment I used on this card actually comes from another Power Poppy set called um, Prairie Bouquet. So I'm painting this up with my watercolors. I'm using my Daniel Smith, my Core, and my Schmincas. And I'm starting with, this is the Core Quinacridone Gold. I love Quinacridone Gold. I want to get the Daniel Smith one because I need to have them all apparently, but shh. Anyway, so I'm just slowly adding clean water and then I'm tapping in the color and letting it bleed out and dry on its own. I don't touch, when I use traditional watercolors on my cards, I do not touch them with a heat gun of any kind. I let them do their thing until they dry on their own. As long as that paper is cool, it is wet, and as long as that paper is wet, the color is moving. So I like to let it do its own thing and see what it wants to do and end up wherever it ends up. So I'm just going to make my way around the entire image doing the exact same process over and over again. Slowly letting that color blend out and meld together. I've sped the video up to two and a half times the original speed. I'm using um, a number eight round silver black velvet brush love this brush. I use this brush for everything. The size 8 is like the perfect size ever. I do want to get my hands on a 10 and a 12 too. Wish list. Um, <laughs> which will happen eventually. So I'm just going to continue on blending them out and dropping in this color. It's gorgeous. Isn't it pretty? I love it. And then I went in afterwards and I added some Delft Blue. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's one of Schmincke's colors out of my Schmincke palette. And I was really, really nervous to put it in, but I was so happy I did it afterwards. So yeah, like I was saying, when I did this image, I blew up the graceful still life and rotated it in order to just get the dogwood branches in. And then Marcella went and made you guys a fantastic file, so you don't have to do all that work. Oh, I was clapping. Sorry. <laughs> so, which is super awesome of her. And I'm so happy she did that for everybody, including myself, because I'll paint these guys up again. Um, when I first started coloring and painting and just working with Power Poppy stamps, Marcella told me I could do whatever my little heart desired. So I have zoomed in and cropped and rotated and flipped and you name it, I have done it with her stamps. And they always work and they always come out fantastic and she's always thrilled to see it and I've never been told to stop so I have zero intention of changing that anytime soon. <laughs> so you can see how at the bottom as I let that dry it fades out on its own back to the white paper which is what I love about watercolors. They're my favorite medium. They're difficult to impossible to control um, you can give it a rough idea of where you want it to go, but it has a mind of its own and it does its own thing. And they're always so pretty and they dance. Over. I just, I love them. Time consuming, but that's okay. <laughs> We're almost done with this color and then we can move on to the next one. So this is the second video for today. If you haven't seen my first one, definitely pop over to my channel and see that. Um, I will have a link to my blog, to Power Poppy store, to the Power Poppy blog, so you can see what all the other design team members did with this. I'll have a link to my Cards and Color Facebook page. Um, we're almost at 150 members. Thumbs up. I'm so excited. Here I'm coming in and adding that darker blue in and blending that out so you can see how I do that. I have to wet the paper just a little bit first where I'm putting it simply because it's dry at this point again. So, but as I was saying about my Facebook page, um, we're at almost 150 members and our next live color along will be on the 25th of February and I'm pretty excited for that. So we have a fantastic sponsor and coupon codes and all that good stuff over in the group. So I would love for you to request to join down below. Um, I've been doing a lot of these watercolor videos. I hope you guys have been enjoying them. 
I'm trying to sneak Copic in there, and I, I need to do some more colored pencil ones. They just, they take so much more time. I can, they take like three and four hours, so I don't do them quite as often. I should get better at that. I'll work on that. But if you guys enjoy them, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. It definitely helps out the channel and helps me continue to make these videos and the channel grow so that I can continue to make these videos. So that would be great. If you have any questions or anything of that nature, leave a comment down below or shoot me an email. I'll throw my email address down there. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget, I am a single mom and I do work full time. So I'm not always around, but I can sit down in the evenings and in the mornings and get back to everybody. So, so you can see how I'm adding this blue in and I'm not going everywhere. But I'm letting it fade out and it gets really, really light and almost kind of a green hue to it. I love this card. <laughs> so I was really happy I added that in, even though when I first finished with the Conacridone Gold, I was like, ah, uh, do I want to? Because I, I might ruin it and I don't want to ruin it. Please don't let me ruin it. So we're going to go through and add these and then that will be it for the background and then we can start painting our flowers. And I kept the flower painting super simple. There's nothing, I didn't do anything super fancy and super detailed. Which was fun to do. Almost around. There we go. So this is quinacridone coral and it's a Daniel Smith color. I'm just pointing to them so that I remember where they are or what colors they are because I know where I put everything on my mess of palettes. So what I did was I started with this one and I went in and wet the flower and then I dropped that color into the middle and kind of moved it around but I didn't let... A, when I dropped the color in the water on the flower was still puddled. And what I should have done was gone through and wet it and let it partially dry, like I'm doing now, so that the paper was wet and the colors would flow, but it wasn't just a big puddle of water, so the whole flower didn't end up being um, pink. So what I'm going is what I'm doing there is I'm taking a thirsty brush, so a really dry brush, and I'm just scooping up a bunch of that pigment. And now that it's just a damp flower, I'm just adding more of it back in. So now I'm trying to remember which flowers I wet. So that I can go and do that on the other ones as well. And I'm still having to... I'm still having to... Um, pick, pull some of that color back with a thirsty brush, with this, which is great. Well, it's not great, but it works. It's definitely a fantastic technique to work on and have under your belt so that you can lift those colors up and clean everything back to where you want it to be, so... So again, we're just adding more of that quinacridone coral and I'm dropping it in and I'm starting in the middle and pulling it out into the rest of the flower. One of my favorite colors. I need to order more of the quinacridone colors. I think I have two now of the Daniel Smith quins, quinacridones and I, I just need to buy them all, but <laughs> that'll take a little bit of time. I have to save up some dollars first. So we're just going to go through and do that on all of our flowers. Now I'm going back to that first one now that it's dried a bit so that I can actually add that color in and get it to do what I want it to do. I must have left for a minute because I put the brush down and then all of a sudden I was painting again. <laughs> Usually means my son needed me. Or my phone rang or something. So we'll get this first color done all the way through. I need to paint these guys again. I want to make them purple. Teal would be really cool too. I could paint them teal even though they aren't teal, but that's okay. Nobody said I had to paint them the right color. This color that I'm using here now is Potter's Pink. And it is a Holbein tube I have. I do believe it's the only Holbein paint I own. Um, Actually, just hang on a second. I'm going to go and grab it and make sure I'm telling you guys the right See, I made a mistake. It's actually Windsor Newton Potter's Pink. I love this color. It's soft and it's an old, antique, dirty pink. 
peachy color. It's it's fleshy. It's it's beautiful. I do not like using it when I've let it dry on my palette. It gets really, really hard and it's very difficult to re-wet. Um, I do want to pick it up in Daniel Smith's line, but I'm not in a big hurry to do so just because I didn't, I don't enjoy it dry on the palette out of this one and I have like a full tube of it here mm. so I can always do it and just squeeze out a little at a time and use use them wet and fresh so that'll be the way I do it so I added in some that was um, upper pink which is a fugitive color so if you're planning on putting it in Sun it will fade really really fast I do want to pick up quinacridone pink so that I don't have those properties but now I'm going through and adding sap green onto the leaves and this is another Daniel Smith color so was the upper pink and this is quinacridone or green gold pardon me green gold and it's a golden core color that I'm using the colors I'm using really aren't like the end of the world and I know people go they're expensive and you have to buy a whole tube and you're talking like $20 a tube and yes it's expensive and no you don't need them all and no you don't have to use all the colors I use so just kind of bear that in mind that you don't have to use what I use this whole clip is just blank whole clip Yep, and I'm going to leave it in there because it shows that I was a goof and I mumbled through the whole thing. There we go. Now we're going in and I am painting the branches brown. That was really weird. So I'm painting them brown and then I am going to take it apart and I will put it on card base. And there will be a picture of the card at the end. Again, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, I would appreciate that too. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye.